It's the radio guy, Mike Prince, and welcome back to the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. We are fortunate to have on the line with us today the athletic director for the Prairie View a and University Panthers, none other than Dr. Donald Reed. How are you doing today, sir? Outstanding, sir. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine. We made it through of the Resurrection Weekend, and everybody is doing well. We've gotten our vaccinations, so we're in pretty good shape on this side. Oh, outstanding. Well, uh, I'm about to uh, complete my second round of the vaccination as well, so excited to get over that hurdle, and we're pushing forward as uh, great Panthers do here on the Hill. Yes, sir, and speaking of the, the COVID and the vaccinations, the Panthers have been hit with uppercuts, body blows, over-the-top punches with this COVID-19. What's the latest update and status on the athletic department right now? Uh, we're doing fairly well. Uh, our football team is uh, back uh, in uh, practice mode, preparing for uh, their next competition on the 17th, and uh, we're moving forward. Uh, cautiously, of course, and uh, maintaining all of the protocols that are necessary to keep everyone safe. Uh, however, like I said uh, at the outset of our conversation, uh, we're pushing forward and and very hopeful and, and prayerful that we will keep making those steps forward such that we can finish out uh, all of our seasons, not only football, but we have softball going, baseball going, uh, women's bowling, congratulations to them. They're in the NCAA tournament as we speak. Uh, they're, they're pushing forward as well, uh, track and field, uh, and uh, soccer. We're hosting the women's soccer championships uh, this weekend uh, here uh, on the Hill. Actually, it starts on uh, tomorrow. So we'll have competitions tomorrow, Friday, and Sunday is the championship game. Absolutely. That tournament uh, has been at the campus of Prairie View the last few years now, and it's been a great turnout and a great event and a great opportunity to display uh, the beautiful campus of Prairie View A&M University. We're talking, yes, sir. With, we're talking with Director of Athletics, Dr. Donald Reed for Prairie View A&M University. Now, when we've made a request, and I know that whatever reasons, time, and and just the point of being able to make yourself available has not been. But if you could, for clarity, uh, what is the actual process and the protocol when one has received the proper data that you got to shut down a particular athletic pro program? How does that actually work? Well, uh, it's two functions. Basically, you have those that test positive, and it's uh, typically after uh, a competition or even before competition, we have uh, testing that occurs. And when someone is identified as, as positive, then the next phase would be the contact tracing aspect of it. So that's uh, being in close proximity with someone uh, 10 to 15 minutes or beyond that that threshold, uh, you are typically contact traced, which will have you uh, be in in a quarantine, and the person that's positive will be in in isolation for uh, seven days, and then the quarantine used to be um, 14 days is now down to 10. So that's typically how uh, it all plays out. And the large numbers of uh, individuals usually are contact traced individuals. They test negative, but they were in close proximity to someone who tested positive. Now, if, if I'm not mistaken, the head trainer in our case is C.J. Porter. He's the one that determines if it's a goal or if it's a standstill on moving forward with the procedures, right? Well, uh, it's a group decision. We uh, consult, of course, with our uh, risk management group on campus as well as our uh, student health services administrator and the uh, doctor 
in charge uh, on campus, and everyone weighs in. Also, our chief uh, medical doctor for our sports program also uh, provides input, and we follow the protocols as uh, written by you know, the university as well as uh, the medical professionals. So it's, uh, it's definitely a collaborative approach and we consult with one another as well as uh, getting feedback from, of course, all those medical professionals. Okay, so there are actual layers, and then everybody has a meeting of the mind to determine if you have enough data to either stand still or go forward. Correct. Okay, very good. Now, once this determination has been made, because maybe it's me because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm TV proud, but it seems like we've been hit a little bit harder and more uh, strenuous than most other programs. Is there something that we as an organization are misunderstanding or we're being, what they say, a more caution than error? Uh, I don't know that it's one or the other. Uh, it's, it's such uh, a hard thing to pinpoint. I mean, you think about it from this standpoint. Uh, for example, if you're in close in, in close proximity to someone unknowingly for a 15-minute period and that person tests positive, then you're now shut down uh, and you're unwilling, not unwilling, but you are unknowingly uh, eliminating yourself with regard to being able to continue to move forward. We have not had a... a real significant spike in uh, positive tests, especially with this last stoppage, uh, specifically with football. It was more of the contact tracing element, and that's what you see across the country. Uh, every week, there is a, a group that has to pause, and is more about the, the number of people that were contact traced, which uh, actually limits those folks that are in those groups to be able to, to participate. Uh, so okay. that is, that's the part that triggers a lot, of, uh, a lot of what you see across the country. Now, is it in some cases also that some have been what we call a false positive and those are rectified after a couple of series of testing? Once the testing has verified that it was a quote-unquote false positive, are you able to then jump through that hurdle, if you would, of the mandate of how long one is to sit out and wait? Uh, yes, if, if it is within a range of time that would not, uh, in essence, be a positive or contact trace. And so, sometimes there are those anomalies. Uh, in certain instances, we will test multiple times. So. Uh, for example, when our men's team was in uh, Birmingham, uh, we would test after e every competition as well as a few times prior to competition to make sure there wasn't something that happened overnight. We uh, have done that in other situations as well to address potentially the false positive piece. Uh, we saw that in the fall with, for example, uh, a couple of coaches uh, that tested positive and then two days later they test negative and then they test negative again and then they're able to be on the sideline. Uh, you see that uh, play out occasionally with, uh, with student athletes as well. So we definitely, first and foremost, want to make sure that our student athletes are uh, safe and uh, remain healthy. We do not want to put them in jeopardy uh, from a health standpoint. So we err on the side of caution when we're talking about uh, something like coronavirus and, and spreading it, as well as those that are carrying it that might have some uh, lifelong health issues because of uh, having the virus. Absolutely, and which leads me to the last weekend's competition in the volleyball championship series. Uh, Prairie View went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pine Bluff, uh, lost in the fifth set, of course, 
But then the following day, the championship game was postponed, or should we say canceled, because of some positive testing from the Pine Bluff side. Now, the concern that I had as an alum, as a student athlete, a supporter, our student athletes were in competition with those same people who came up with less than 24 hours with some positive testing. One wants to, which leads one to believe, were they doing the strenuous testing as they did for basketball? And do we have to put our student athletes into quarantine knowing that they were on the same court with these people prior to? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I will say this. Uh, SWAC has done a great job communicating what the protocols are and us as institutions uh, follow those protocols. I can't speak specifically to uh, that particular situation or Arkansas Pine Bluffs uh, testing protocols. I'm not aware of any of those things. I just know that uh, everyone has the best interest uh, of the student athletes at heart, including the conference as well as each institution. So I don't, I don't have a, a lot of details about what transpired during the volleyball tournament, but I will say that I know that and am confident that our, our conference is doing everything possible and so are our peers to keep everyone safe. Okay. Now, did we as Prairie View do anything once we found out that, that our student athletes were, were exposed to this potential virus? And did we get, take our kids and do a self-quarantine or did we just kind of let it settle? Uh, we did a combination of both. We still have our student athletes test and, and our staff also. Uh, uh, myself, I, I test at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week. So uh, we all are doing our due diligence as far as testing, wearing our masks, and also uh, those of us that are able to receive the vaccination, we are pursuing that as well. So we definitely. Uh, worked closely with our medical staff to to do the best to ensure the safety of our volleyball team, just like we we do with all of our other teams. So okay, we, we very definitely good. we definitely keep that keep that front of mind every day. Very good. We're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Athletic Director Dr. Donald Reed, who is gracious enough to spend some time with us on today. And uh, sticking on the COVID nineteen. Uh, protocols, him the calls, data calls, and everything else that we've been dealing with here of late. Uh, is it coming to a point now where it's going to be mandatory that, if not at Prairie View across the board, that if anyone wants to partake in Division One competition, that part of that process is that that person will have to be vaccinated by one of the three shots available now? I haven't heard anything definitively. I've heard conversations about that. Uh, it would be something, if available, to everyone. I know that folks are encouraging everyone to get vaccinated, and we will definitely do the same. Uh, that's something that I've heard quite a bit of in recent days and weeks. And I'm hopeful that we'll get to a point to where uh, everyone that chooses to do so will take advantage of the opportunity to, to uh, become vaccinated and we can uh, move forward as such. And then I also will say that it's uh, good to continue to protect ourselves by wearing masks and uh, masks and um uh, social distancing and, and all of those things that CDC and everyone's been talking about because it just helps ensure that we aren't uh, being a, a spreader of the vi uh, virus unknowingly, and it also protects everyone around us. No doubt about it. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm for the mass and for vaccination. And when we're talking in the case of student athletes, we have to keep in mind, at least I do, I can only speak for me, that it's an honor and a privilege 
to display that university on the front of your chest, wherever you're mm-hmm. representing and whomever you're representing. And part of that honor and privilege, there are certain protocols or procedures that you would have to go through in order to put on that uniform. And I'm just thinking, is it to the point, not that you're forcing anyone, but if you want to be a part of this elite group, then this is what is going to be required. And is it getting to that point because of the travel, because of the close quarters, because of the potential of being around other student athletes, or are there any other mandates that you're seeing coming down the road with that? Uh, yes, there, there have always been an NCAA a baseline standard for participation. Uh, part of the process is the, the physical health of the individual, so uh, physical examinations, all of those things are, are, are consistent with what's happened in the past. And I would say that the addition of other screenings, whether it's COVID or any other screenings that uh, come about, uh, each institution would em- embrace it because ultimately it is helping us protect our students and student athletes and staff uh, when we have events and competitions and the like. So. Uh, I'm very hopeful that we uh, will continue to look for ways to provide a safe environment for all parties involved. Yes, sir, because it's been a, a strenuous enough roller coaster with normal circumstances, but with the COVID-19's presence, it has absolutely compounded everything. And uh, we're in a dilemma right now as far as football, off to a 2-0 and start. But we're still in suspended animation right now. Of course, a big game coming up down the road against Pine Bluff. When it comes to the financial impact, are you at liberty to share, you know, in a roundabout way, not to the per, you know to the penny or whatnot? What has it cost to not be able to play games and the setbacks that come with COVID-induced games? I would say it, it's uh, it was more of an impact from uh, the competition in the fall uh, due to the loss of revenue from the game guarantees we had scheduled uh, during the fall season. Uh, there's also an impact in the spring from a, a revenue standpoint when uh, the capacity is diminished as one would assume with less spectators being able to attend, it does impact the the uh, ticket revenue, of course. So those things in combination uh, impact the, the revenue stream and the budget. Uh, however, uh, this is one of the things that we were dealt, uh, if you would say, and uh, we're definitely moving forward and, and thinking about how we can uh, get those uh, revenues going again as we move into the p- fall season as well as uh, in future seasons. So uh, I, I look at it from a, a positive standpoint to say, okay, this is in essence forced us to, to think about the model that we have and what can we do to uh, adjust it such that we're able to thrive in, a, in the new normal that's coming up. Uh, how do we go about making sure that we're providing the great experiences for our students, fans, uh, sponsors, all of those individuals and groups that are, are supporters of Prairie View and m University and its athletics program. So I, I'm thinking about that every day. What can we do to provide a great student athlete experience and student experience and alumni, fans, donors, you name it, what can we continue to do to keep them engaged and keep them energized? So uh, we are committed to making sure that that we do things the appropriate way and we provide a great experience to all of of our constituents and, and most importantly, providing a great educational experience and a great competitive experience for our student athletes. 
Once again, we're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Athletic Director Dr. Donald Reed of the Prairie View a University Panthers, a strong, solid performance thus far from the competition field um, in the world of Panthers athletics. Um, of course, the darling of the season thus far has been the women's bowling team, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, it seems like that Coach White has that Midas touch. And then you've had some recent, uh, recent success, of course, with the men's basketball program. And, of course, mm-hmm. that is one of the bigger eyes on the entire athletic department. And it's almost a catch-22. Uh, so when you talk about it and think about it, now you got people that's going to start trying to come after your golden child. <laughs> how, do you deal, how do you deal with that, man? Well, I, I look at it as uh, flattery, you know. <laughs> I, I look at it as a, a great thing for uh, the university athletics pr- program and our men's basketball program that uh, we uh, have uh, things that, that we're doing that are attractive to others. Of course, uh, you know, you, you think about how, things transpire or things occur and say, you know, it's, it's uh, something that might be a negative. However, I think of it as uh, an opportunity to really uh, bring attention to what we're doing here at Prairie View, uh, not only from an athletic standpoint, but a university standpoint. And uh, if our uh, men's basketball, women's basketball, tennis, golf, uh, whomever, football, uh, can be a positive and very uh, successful ambassador for our athletics program and university, that's a plus. I also understand that uh, you know people will come and, and try to recruit folks to come to their, their place or, or their organization. I understand that. And uh, we want to make sure that we do a great job uh, in keeping our our talent and, and at the same time understand that that is a, a part of what typically happens when you have a lot of success, uh, when, uh, when uh, people begin to notice what you're doing and they want to be a part of it or want to engage folks that are involved and uh, want to move them to other places. So that becomes where the relationships are important because, be honest, we, we know our pockets are not as deep as some other people would be coming towards us. So I guess, I guess the mental struggle of it is you know in your mind that there is a cutoff point you don't want it to get to there, but you have to be a realist as well, too, right? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's a part of the process. It's interesting uh, you asked that question. If you look at the landscape of college athletics and industry, any type of industry, there's always some shift or turnover. You know, people go from uh, Google to another company or whatever the case might be. However, uh, those companies that uh, are those pillars of, of the community or pillars of, of an industry are, are very resilient. And uh, that is what we think about when you build programs or, or places that people are attracted to. Uh, they are are here and supportive, and, and we, we want them here, and we will do our best to keep them. And we also understand that uh, decisions are made and people move around, especially in the industry of athletics. You, you see a transition on a yearly basis, and uh, you have to be mindful of that and at the same time be nimble to be able to make the appropriate adjustments. I know yes, that uh, I know that what happens when you uh, send to a championship status and 
maintains it, there'll always be more eyes and more people wanting to be a part of it or they want to, in essence, piggyback on what you're doing. And that's what you see. Uh, it's actually flattering to, to have people wanting to uh, use your ideas or want to consult with you about things. And part of that in the athletics realm is uh, going in and attempting to uh, get some of your talent. In this case, it would be coaches. And in some cases, in most cases, it's, it's athletes. So uh, we do our best to retain of course, our students as well as our coaches, and uh, we hope for the best. Is it hard sometimes not to take it personal when a student decides to leave or a coach decides to leave? And not that anyone has decided to leave from the coach's perspective anyway, but we know mm -hmm. the students are entering the portal and people yes. are at liberty to make their own choices. Do you, mm -hmm. as the leader, sometimes take that personal or you just chalk it up to the territory? Uh, I don't try, I try not to allow it to become personal because I think and I feel that we have great relationships for the most part with, with our student athletes and uh, we have great relationships with our coaches. Sometimes it just comes, comes down to circumstance that, uh, someone decides to uh, going another direction, and in this day and age of college athletics, uh, being in a in a I guess uh, a decade or uh, two decades of of transition with between uh, student athletes and staff and others, uh, it's almost a part of the the fabric of athletics now, especially the portal. Everyone is is interested in uh, shopping around, for lack of a better choice of words, or uh, you know, seeing what, what's out there that might be attractive to them, and uh, it's it's come it's become a standard operating procedure as far as that goes. Of course, uh, you would want to retain those who want to be retained. Uh, at the same time, we're now in a new place in collegiate athletics, and we have the portal. So we have to adjust our, our thoughts on how we uh, adjust and, and manage uh, those uh, situations and circumstances. Do you see that they will at least attempt to try to fine-tune the flexibility that the portal now has? And it seems like that if you sneeze, and someone doesn't say bless you, that you can pack up your things and go to the portal. Do you see them adjusting or, or at least trying to address the, the freeness that you have now through this portal? Um, that's a great question. I don't, I don't see it now. Uh, I think it will remain in, in this form for the next year or so. Uh, maybe beyond that, uh, there's been a lot of flexibility over the last year, year and a half with COVID with regard to student athletes being able to opt in or opt out of um, athletics for a duration of time. And uh, the portal is also now uh, gives you a little more flexibility as well uh, from the student athlete standpoint. So uh, I don't know that there's going to be a significant change. There will be a few adjustments, but it won't be any significant change uh, from my vantage point uh, in the near future. Okay. And, of course, the latest uh, rising of the tide would be name and image and likeness. What, if anything, have you guys done at Prairie View to prepare for this next wave of opportunities for our student athletes? Uh, we have been doing a lot of research, as all of my colleagues have been been doing over the last year or so. Of course, we're in consultation with uh, our legal team uh, to get a great understanding of what's being proposed and uh, what's coming down uh, the pike here soon. 
such that we'll be prepared to address uh, those things and, and apply the rules and, and policies that will come down from the, the name, image, and likeness uh, legislation that, that should be coming out here relatively soon. Uh, of course, we, we want uh, our student athletes to have uh, the ability to uh, capitalize uh, to a degree on some of their, their gifts and talents that they have is just making sure that the structure uh, is clear and our staff as well as our student athletes understand how things work and uh, we'll move forward as such. But that is definitely a hot topic nationally and it's been that way for at least uh, two years now. Yes, sir. Now, are you for or against the NIL? I'm for with conditions. Uh, I, I'm not completely opposed to it, opposed to it uh, unilaterally. I think there is a, a happy medium there. It's just the, the minutia that, that we have to work through to make sure that uh, we are able to follow through with what what is uh, – being promulgated from uh, the legislature and, and all of those folks that are involved, we're actually able to do it and monitor it in such a way that everyone will be on equal footing. Uh, that was my next question, because do you see this as another ploy of creating degrees of separation for the haves and the have-nots? Because it's always been some type of moving target throughout the years that whether it was APR related, uh, the dollars and cents that's distributed, and this is just another tool to, to further separate that. Do you see that as potentially part of the mastermind plan? Oh, no, sir. No, sir, I, I do not. I, I don't think uh, those that came up with this concept thought that deeply, not to be disparaging or being uh, disrespectful, I believe it was it was something that uh, students and others that looked at the landscape and thought about how a student, uh, in this case student athletes, felt about not being able to uh, use their other gifts outside of the athletic gifts that they have to uh, be able to use their image, their name, and their their skills outside of athletics to generate revenue, and it evolved into this. You're familiar of the Ed O'Bannon case and the Austin mm -hmm. case, and all of those things. Uh, and it started out with the video games when EA Sports came out with the, the college basketball and college football games. And those student athletes said, hey, that's, that's me. <laughs> it was just like me. So uh, it started that way, and it's evolved to this name, image, and likeness piece. And uh, I, I, I see some value and some understanding of it. I just need more information such that we all understand the rules and be able to follow the rules uh, with regard to name, image, and likeness. Okay, fair enough. And, of course, we know the Power Five in the world of football, they've basically created their own island. Do you think it's just a matter of time before we have to start restructuring NCAA football as we once upon a time knew it? Great question. I don't know if we're there yet completely. Uh, however, uh, you get glimpses of, of those kinds of things we're on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline with Athletic Director Dr. Donald Reed of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. And, um, sir, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out uh, with us today on this. It's been a while since we've had you on. We had a couple of setbacks, but uh, as always, we, we get it lined up, and I'm so glad that we're able to get these things knocked out right now. Now, we've covered a lot of ground on today in regards of COVID and NIL. Now, I'm going to bring it home just for a little bit right now. 
as we are coming toward the end of this interview. And I got to say, you've been doing quite well. Now, from my data and research, you are an Omega Sci Fi man, correct, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. you said that probably you said that like you was online. <laughs> yes, sir. Greetings, big brother. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, sir. And for the record, yes, my 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 only brother, um, he he's an Omega man as well. Um, All right. Yes, sir. I I, I played Sigma, of course. But uh, oh well, I, yeah. that, I have Sigma friends, so you can be one of my Sigma friends. And I feel the same way, sir. You can be one of my Omega friends since, you know, it's it's a two-way street, two-way street. So I, yes, I greatly sir. and gladly accept that invitation. But Thank I said you. all that to say this. I know the pride that comes with you and your beloved fraternity colors. And I know you know where yes, I'm sir. going with this right now. And yes, sir. I, I want to ask you a question. It's a straight yes or no question. Would any other gold be acceptable to daunt representation of your beloved fraternity? Yes. It no, no. The answer is no. No, there's only one, one uh, canteen color that that matters to me. Okay. And would you like to go on the record to say what that color is, sir? It's uh, old gold. It's a okay, yeah, and purple. And yeah, purple, old, of course. Old gold and purple, or some would call it the old English gold, whatever you want to call it, but it's the yes, old sir. gold. Okay. Yes, sir. And I know that you've had people pulling at your coattail, and I've been on record for saying this for quite some time now, and I'll continue to beat that drum. I have, if you need it, the actual gold that Adidas provides that would give us that old gold look for our beloved Prairie View a and University. What is it going to take for us to get that old gold back? And how <laughs> soon can we get it back? Uh, have, do you have my office bug? Uh, no, do you, sir. Do, do you have, are, are there leaks in my, in my organization? No, uh, I'm not. I'm not even <laughs> saying any of that. But this is. I, this has been something that I've been carrying near and dear in my heart for for quite some time. And I know people get sick of me talking about it, but the the, the squeaky oil, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? Yes, sir. I will okay. say this. I will say this. I am fond of of the color for a variety of reasons. And uh, definitely interested in pursuing and go uh, uh, pursuing what you're talking about. Okay, if, if you were to give me a crystal ball on a time frame, what would that time frame be? Well, I would say uh, within uh, twelve to eighteen months. That long, maximum. Maximum. That's the maximum number. So you could you could think of it as okay. We're now in April. It could be any time between May of twenty twenty one to uh, January of twenty two. That's a wide I don't know if area, and I guess. I know. I don't it's think I don't think that's be. fair. I don't think that's <laughs> fair, Doc. You're not being you're not being fair with me right now. You've been doing excellent up until now. Now I feel like this is a, me this the is old a, no 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 no. This is a, I I will say this. It's hard to to pin down a timeline due to a lot of moving parts. I will say this. Uh, it's something that uh, has been discussed. And it just comes down to, you know, the whole process that we're going through to make certain that we, uh, we're in alignment with uh, where we want to go because this is one of those decisions that we want to have uh, a lasting shelf life and something that everyone would feel great about. And you are not the only person to mention that to me. So uh, it's definitely front of mind 
uh, for me as well as uh, everyone on campus. Okay, and and I guess I have to take that for right now and and kind yeah, of absolutely. have some wishful Absol- thinking. <laughs> yes, and absolutely. As uh, uh, I might have more information here in the next few months with a a, uh, a definite timeline. We don't okay. uh, we don't have anything yet, but it's duly noted. I know we we might have spoken about this before. And I've been uh, doing uh, my due diligence, asking individuals and the like, and uh, it seems to be something that uh, has a uh, a lot of uh, interest, a lot of eyes, and a lot of people communicating that they would uh, like to see uh, that Pantone uh, tone color that we're talking about. Yes, sir. I just, you know, it's to me, it's synonymous with the legacy of our beloved university, and uh, it just love to see it get back in its rightful position. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to back down for today. I'm going to let I, I'll receive this as well enough, and I do thank you for addressing and answering that question. I thank you for answering uh, all the questions that we had on today's segment. Of course, we want to give you an opportunity to share some thoughts and comments, and I'll now turn the floor over to you, sir. Well, I thank you for your time, and I thank everyone's commitment to uh, Prairie View A and M and its athletics department and uh, our sports programs. I uh, really, really appreciate uh, your support from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, staying with us throughout the tumultuous uh, year and uh, the year thus far. We still have things going on as far as sports and. We have championships to continue to pursue, so we're doing that uh, aggressively, and we're also providing a great student experience for our student-athletes and and providing them with uh, the health and uh, health services and and the medical services and performance services that we can uh, to provide a great experience for them as as student-athletes. And I want you guys to Uh, Continue to think about us, keep us in your thoughts, as well as uh, support us uh, by coming to our our competitions that we we have remaining and then uh, getting ready for uh, the fall uh, activities as well as all of the things that go along with uh, fall uh, semester and uh, the fall athletic season. So we're, we're excited to get back on schedule. Very good, sir. We thank you so much for joining us today on the Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union Hotline. Thank those who have joined in and listened on today's episode. He is Dr. Donald Reed, Athletic Director of the Prairie View A&M University Panthers. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. And, of course, our website is obnradio.com. And for any questions, comments, concerns pertaining to this episode or any other episode, that number is 713-570-6736. The time has come where I must exit stage left. My time is far spent on today. But until the next time, you guys be blessed. And we'll see you on the other side.